In this video, we're going to tie Schroeder's parachute hopper. This is one of my favorite hopper patterns uh, out here in the West for trout. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a 5212 hopper hook. We're going to just start with some tan thread, take it all the way to the, the back of the of the fly. Then we're going to tie in some thick brown thread. You can use like a 3 aught or a UTC 140 or even a brown floss and you're just going to want to let that hang off the the back of the hook. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our thread most of the way up the shank of the hook. I'm going to leave about a quarter of the the hook exposed there and we're going to take a nice generous clump of uh, calf body hair and we're going to place it in our stacker and we're going to stack it so that the tips all are nice and even and I pull all those out of my stacker and uh, we want to tie this in so that uh, all the tips face forward we want these uh, tips to be more than half of the length of the shank of the hook. I want a nice tall post and we're going to do a nice loose wrap of thread to start and then bite down on it. And Then what we can do is trim out all the, the butt ends. I try to trim out as many of the long fibers as I can. Then I'll just kind of clean up all the work I just did and secure it to the shank. Kind of build up a little bit of a ramp from the post to the shank. Then I'm going to take my thread forward, pull up the post, and I'm going to take my thread and lay down some thread wraps right in front of the post and wrap back up onto it. What this is going to do is it's going to act as a, a wedge. It's going to wedge that uh, calf body hair so it faces up. Once I have that wedge in place, I'm just going to take this uh, calf body, draw it all up into one single post and then I'm going to wrap horizontally with my thread. Try to capture all the fibers if you can. Once I get a few wraps down I'm going to come back to the shank of the hook and just secure a few more wraps. Then I'm going to go back up to the post. I'm going to wrap up the post ever so slightly here. About a sixteenth of an inch. This is going to give me a base for my hackle to uh, wrap on. And I'm going to wrap down the post and back to the shank of the hook. Then I'm going to take my thread all the way back to the back here and we're going to build a body and you can use a lot of different uh, materials for the body. Um, a lot of different types of dubbing I should say. I'm just going to use a natural dubbing but you can use a synthetic blend or a synthetic dubbing. I'm going to use a, a hairline dubbing in a uh, olive and tan mix. This is a very hopper, hoppery kind of color. Looks just like a, a natural grasshopper. But uh, you can tie it in straight olive or uh, straight tan or black if you want to imitate like a cricket. But this hopper Hopper tan color is a pretty good buggy color for this fly. And we're going to start right at the back of the fly here. And we're going to build up a taper as we work our way forward. Getting thicker and thicker as we work our way forward on the shank of the hook. And I usually add dubbing as I go. Just a little bit to the shank each time. easiest to do it that way. That way you don't add too much at, uh, at once. It's very easy to overdo it with dubbing. And 
This hairline dubbing is also very easy to work with. Most of the natural dubbings are. Dubs very well. And we're going to dub our way all the way forward until we get to that uh, parachute post. I'm going to stop almost right on the transition from where the post butt ends meet the shank of the hook. You can see how I'm kind of building that cone taper. Right here at the end is where you're going to be the thickest on the body. That's what we want. Hoppers start off very thin at the back and then get bulkier and bulkier as you move <coughs> towards their thorax. So we're trying to, to match that. Dub this uh, dubbing as tight as you can. You don't want it to be too loose or scraggly. I like a fairly tight uh, dubbed body. And once we have it dubbed most of the way forward, you can trim out any scraggly fibers if you have any. Then we're going to take our floss or our thread and we're going to counter wrap this around the body. All this is doing is giving us some segmentation. And then you can capture it once you get to the thorax. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the wing and the legs. You'll want to pre-prepare these beforehand. Uh, I already did that for us here. That way you don't have to uh, wait for glue to dry and watch me on the video. But uh, the first thing I've done is I took some modeled turkey feather here or uh, the modeled peacock feather, either one. And uh, I've taken about 20, I'd say it's about 20 little individual fibers and you want to either super glue them, head cement them, or use a workable fixative to uh, keep them all together. And uh, I use my hackle pliers to kind of hold them and then I just either spray or brush the material on there. And the next thing that you're going to pre-prepare are your legs. Uh, you're going to take a clump of about six or seven pieces of natural pheasant tail and you're going to tie a knot in them with uh, either your whip finisher or a knot tying tool. I use my fingers to just tie a knot in it and use the whip finisher tip to kind of pull the, the other end through the knot. And it's just a simple overhand knot. And then you're going to want to coat the tips of these with either super glue or head cement. I use brush on uh, super glue. And you're going to need two sets of those. And uh, the, then the next thing you do, once you've already got those uh, taken care of, you're going to take your turkey feather here and you're going to cut off the tips and then you're just going to round the end so that it looks like a little hopper wing that's folded. So all I did was I just rounded the tip of it. Then we're going to tie this in. We're going to tie this in so that the, the back of this hangs off the back of the fly ever so slightly. So I just kind of eyeball it. And I'm going to take a nice loose wrap with my, my thread here. Hardest part's just kind of getting it started. Got to be very delicate here that you don't damage the wing on accident when you're tying it in. And I want this wing to be slightly folded, just like that.
perfect. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in those legs that we pre-made. We're going to tie these in so that the V faces down. We're going to tie them on each side and I like the knot to be almost at the back but not not quite at the back. So we're going to tie these in right on the side of the hook. I like them to kind of face ever so slightly at an upward angle. And you can pull on them to kind of position them. Then we want to, of course, match that on the other side here. Then you can trim out the butt ends. And before we move on, we really want to make sure these are lock down tight so I'll give them a pinch and I'll go lock down on them with some nice tight thread wraps. Now it's almost impossible to tie that knot on the very tip of the legs so what you can do is just trim the legs ever so slightly just the tip of them that way those tips aren't, uh, aren't too long Now the next thing to do is we're going to tie in our, our uh, hackle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a grizzly feather here. I'm just going to roughly kind of measure out the size that I need here. I like a fairly large grizzly feather for a hopper. I like it to stick back. about a quarter inch, half an inch past the, the body so you can just kind of roughly measure it out. Once you have your selected feather we are going to prepare it by just stripping off all the fluffy feathers at the base of the feather exposing the stem that we're going to tie in on Once you've got that, I'm going to tie this in actually on the shank of the hook first. I'm going to pull the feather vertically. I'm going to wrap up the post until I get to the top. And then I'm going to wrap back down. And uh, then I can capture or cut the, uh, the butt end of the feather out of there. Now the next thing that we need to do is dub the thorax and just kind of finish up and clean up the head. We're going to use that same dubbing that we used on the body to match. And all we're going to do is just kind of cover up all the work we've already done. Try not to catch your your feather on accident. So I'm going to wrap behind and also I am going to wrap in front of the post. I like to dub fairly thin once I get in front of the, the post. I don't want to overdo it or crowd that eye too much. So I just put on enough to coat the thread and cover up the work that we've done. There we go. Then I'm just going to hang my thread to the side of the fly at this point. Then I'm going to take my hackle here. I'm going to just get it started by making that first wrap at the very top of the post. Then I'm going to work my way down the post and I can hold on to the post and hold it taunt if I need be. Just work my way down. Try not to trap any fibers. 
once you get to the very very bottom we are actually ready to capture this I'm gonna capture this post by taking my thread and sneaking underneath all the fibers and I do that with a downward angle of my bobbin and I usually get three nice tight wraps under there then you can trim out the feather then you can whip finish this is tricky but you just use a downward angle again with your bobbin and your whip finisher and if you like to finish off the classic way by trimming it off at the front of the eye of the hook you can do it that way but this way is a little cleaner and uh, believe it or not a little easier once you get used to it and there you have a finished Schroeder's parachute hopper then you'll want to apply some head cement to the underside of the thorax once you've tied it off that way it uh, doesn't come undone on you and that's all there is to the Schroeder's parachute hopper you can find all the materials for this fly on our website in the riffle.com if you're watching this via YouTube there is a link below this video in the description panel and uh, there you can find a link to our website that'll take you to the recipe and uh, also the materials to tie the fly that is the Schroeder's parachute hopper